Yeah, but, no, we're on stream. Oh, now I'm oh. legally obligated to make a separate war in this pod. Well, you're playing new gen Jedi, so you can't, can't do that part. Good? Stop. Collaborate. Collaborate. No. You can't make me play. I'm just, I'm just going straight on the opposite side of the board. Not even that way. So, <laughs> I assure you, sir. You don't actually have to play. I don't know that the gas stops are actually correct anymore. I know they're correct for the Jedi. They're correct for Kylo. And this is Kylo auto correct for the Jedi. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. And the Upsilon doesn't have to actually like the space stops. I don't actually care what's happening. I'm scared of him. Kylo doesn't move on. Shock horror. Two streets. Take it off. Using quick draw is just the bait to make people try to shoot at something early. Seems seems good. Quick draw just quick draw the only thing you can quick draw. Quick draw just needs to die a bit. Crazy ass weird ass bait. Yes. I love it. Yo. Alright, welcome to the All right, welcome to a very special stream of Thursday Night X-Wing. We are playing on Tuesday, live at Common Ground Games in Dallas. You are looking live. <laughs> We're going to do our best to uh, stream some good games for you tonight. We have probably enough time for two, maybe three games. Um, as always, thank you for watching, subscribing, and following. Uh, we have a couple goals down there at the bottom. We have our... Uh, bit goal or donation goal trying to get to $50 worth of bits so that we can um, make a sweet custom alt art card and get it out to everyone who subscribes and donates and then also our subscriber goal is we're trying to get to 10 if we get to 10 we will give away um, either a conversion kit or a large pack ship so keep that in mind So it's like a tall, narrow, like three-story house. Gotcha. I'm going to go check it out tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's pretty good. That's cool. The area there's a bar, like, this guy. Downtown, so everybody's going to those bars. There's no walkabout. There's like a... I guess they're... I guess... I guess white people are finally coming to the planet of Louisville. They're doing a... They're doing a... Urban renewal type... Type, type nonsense. White people come to the we're back. We're back, yeah. White people came back with a vengeance. <laughs> White people are back with a vengeance to take Louisville to their own again. Which means that, you know, we buy this house and property value in five years. It'll be great. Yeah. So I guess everybody wins. Quick draw! Quick draw! Quick draw! There are two types of people in this world, the quick and the draw. All right, we are up to three subscribers. Woo! Subscribers, huh? Nice. Yeah, we did it. $7.50. Rosimos. If you have Amazon Prime, you get Twitch Prime subs for free. If you haven't already used it for, you know, if you haven't already used it for your favorite cam girl, use it for this. Are you into that ASMR stuff? How could you not be? <laughs> girl eating a pickle. Yep, only the best. I, I, I'm old, I don't know what any of that is. 
What's up? I said I'm old. I don't know what any of that is. Oh, you're old. Oh, I do. Okay. You, you have, have to, to Google, Google it. I was so ready I know, to, to I, 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 I know what it is. It will really make you go. The best thing is, you know, what? So you know it's become mainstream when they do a bad radio report song. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I listen, I listen to podcasts. Okay, I know, so you're good. I know what this is. You're hip when down with the kids. Yes, I am. Well, on some things. Right. Let's see, so... In October, so what's the due date? Is it November? Uh, yeah, so early November. Okay. Okay, really close. So then, yeah. Yep, and they're having worlds on my mom's birthday, so that's fun. When's your mom's birthday? October 15th. Oh, okay. Good? Yep. Birthday world. Look at me, I'm committing. Not really. Yeah, but who are the subscribers? Who uh, are they? A guy named Jack. Jack, we'd like to thank Jack for being Wait, a subscriber. Is it Jack? Is it like Denton and Jack? Jack? Yeah, Denton Jack. Hey, yeah, yeah. Denton Jack. Oh, so we tell the story about how Denton Jack subverted an entire campaign against cancer event <laughs> by just changing his list yeah. mid-tournament? <laughs> <laughs> More or less saying, I don't care, Bobby. <laughs> yep. Can I change my list? No. True story. I'm going to change it. This is my tournament now. And then right, after, <laughs> and then right after you change it, hey, you're going on stream. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now there's proof. All right. Camera my turn? Down. Yes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Foes. Camera back up. <laughs> Sitting on faux foes. I just want to crab walk this whole time. Crab walk. I didn't bring these ships that are agile and nimble to do nothing but boost and roll the whole game. <laughs> That's all I do. That's all, that's all you want to do. It's fun. It's what I came here to do. I didn't actually come here to play a game. That's right. You can't make, you can't make me you didn't come. You didn't come here to play either. So. No, I didn't. I'm going to commentate on your guys' game from right over here where you can't hear me. Oh, no. <laughs> we are the idea squad. All right, so as you can see, we're still in that part of the game where they are feeling each other out, just kind of flying around the outside. How is the sound on this? Can you guys hear me pretty well, or is it uh, picking up too much ambient sound? Just getting the last few last minute things set up here. So for those of you keeping up and following the uh, progress of our stream, we are uh, we've upgraded the uh, camera settings a little bit, so we should have a clearer picture on the game. And also, we are um, using Streamlabs now, so that's getting us a little bit more on the feature side of things. Um, so oh, as you can see, that was a bump there, but uh, you know, this is casual play. Just put the ships wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a high stress, high uh, high serious game right now. 
Uh, but yes, we're using Streamlabs now, so you'll notice if you follow or subscribe, um, you'll see emojis pop up and kind of reward you for that. We're still working out a little bit of the kinks of our uh, layout, but we are getting a little bit better um, each and every week, which is the goal. And I'm thankful to Common Ground for letting us come out today and do some streaming um, because that allows us to uh, stream this week because I'm going to be out of town on Thursday, but now we still get to get a game in. So that's pretty awesome. So thank you. Ah, just noticing the uh, browser there is not correct. Let's see if we can't update that. Ah, there we go. Much better. I actually have the correct list set now. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luckily, this uh, mic, this mic actually does. It's like a cone, so it's only picking up this stuff. Like I have some ambient sound that's just bouncing around the room, but uh, it's pretty good with just being like, I'm right here, and now I have that baritone soothe voice. So I'm actually sitting about, uh, I don't know, about five feet away from the other game, from the game I'm streaming, and about to watch a game of uh, a couple people learning how to play, or at least one guy learning how to play. So this is going to be pretty fun. I'm going to try not to get confused and commentate on the wrong game. And again, the goal of any casual game is just to pick up that ship and put it wherever you want. <laughs> Hopefully these guys are going to get a little bit closer to each other soon and we'll uh, get to see some action. Guys, hurry up and joust. We need action. People want explosions and pew, 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 pew. We're desperately trying to avoid the joust.
All right, we are getting a little bit closer to some action here. It looks like we might even have shots this turn. Are you saying that the vocals are not coming through loud or that the background sound is not overwhelmingly loud? All right, looks like we got one more turn before we're really going to see that action. So uh, hopefully this time we get to see some pew, 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 pew. pew. They are deep in thought of their dials right now. Okay, so right now I'm expecting something, maybe a one or two straight from Tavson. Um, Kylo, I think, is going to come in pretty strong with, say, a three bank or possibly even something like a five straight boost um, trying to either pass or get back there quick draw is kind of the wild card could just come in straight um, also could maybe disengage trying to get behind that gas cloud um, really with the coordinate and the way these ships are moving it's uh, there's all sorts of things that could happen here The Jedi's, um, depending on which target they're going to use for their primary engagement, it's uh, it could go either way.
Let me try that again with your subscription. I think I can replay it. Let's see what we got. Has subscribed. Should come up right down in the middle. Hmm, I guess it's not. That's not good. Better work on that. I don't know why it didn't work, because it also should show you as uh, one of the subscribers on our goal. We have three subscribers now. It may take uh, Twitch a while to update that information and then to bring it back to us. But I will get that worked out. See what happens when I do this. That's what it should look like, but with your name on there. <laughs> okay, sorry. Back to the action here. Uh, Kylo played that uh, superbly. Look at how he got back in there behind the Jedi, not taking shots this round. He's going to have a uh, lot of shot options here um, from his other ships. That boost may have just gotten that ship out of the out of Kylo's arc there. It's hard to tell with the way that the uh, the angle of the camera is. All right, we just had a couple shields lost there from Quick Draw. Gonna spend that focus. Looks like two hits, two crits. That is three shields down on, it looks like, Anakin. Oh, and a crit. What's a crit? Wounded. All right. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah. Before it's updated. All right. So overall, that was a pretty good round for Chambly here. Uh, he took a couple of shields on Quick Draw. Ended up getting a crit through on Anakin there. As a wounded pilot, actions may be read. So 
So we got two Jedis that round did not get a shot. And that makes a pretty big difference when you only have three ships on the board. Um, looks like he was able to arc dodge Kylo as well. So uh, I suspect the Jedi in the outside corner up there is going to hard turn in, try and get behind some of the other ships. Kylo can do probably a two bank, keep chasing Anakin. Uh, his Tavson can bump if he wants, uh, just right in there, try and block up that middle, or he can just do something like a one forward. So we're going to see the bump here. And again, casual play, you just kind of bump Kylo and pick him up, put him back wherever you want, <laughs> whatever works for you. See the hard one here. I'm thinking action wise, we'll probably just see a uh, focus. Okay, we're going to barrel roll, maybe in an attempt to get out of Tavson's arc there. target lock on the quick draw. So we have some uh, clear target priorities here. Expecting, what do we got there? Looks to be a sloop. Yeah, it's going to turn around and say, I still want to be in this fight. I don't know if that was necessarily the right call there. I think he could have um, disengaged that round, come back around. Um, gotten a much better trajectory on whatever target he was going to go after. Kylo, too hard. Silencer dials are amazing. That's going to open his arc up a lot, and he still has um, actions here to do whatever he needs to do. Um, I think a target lock onto Anakin. And let's see if he's going to barrel roll as well. Yep, sure enough. He's going to keep that arc as wide as he can in case Anakin is going to try and shoot through that gap. All right, that's going to be an attempted sloop from Quick Draw. It looks pretty much like it's going to clear. Very aggressive playing here after a very uh, non-aggressive start. They kind of felt each other around. This is where Chambly being, um, getting such a good first engagement can really play a little bit more loose right here, a little bit more aggressive and not be in a bad spot even if it doesn't go his way this round. But getting all those guns on target, if he can kill Anakin here, um, the game is massively, is massively switched. But, uh, you know, we still have to find out what Anakin did here, and we're going to find out right now. Ah, he's going to run away. Just going to fly. Oh, no, that is a K-turn. Okay, he's coming uh, back around. Going to maybe take a pot shot at uh, Quick Draw or Kylo, or maybe just take a decent range two shot into the back of... Some target locks moving around there, trying to figure out where they go. All right, so I think uh, Tassa must have been in his bullseye arc there. That's why he didn't take the stress. Alright, so we got some shots here. Looks like we got two hits there. Coming through. Quick draw is going to get four dice. Range three obstructed, if that's what they're ruling it. Uh, it's hard to tell with the angles on the stream here. But if he rolls four, we'll know that they uh, call it obstructed. Alright, 
looks like. I see at least one bit of paint here. Looks like he's gonna spend a force, take one damage. No damage. All right, looks like he's gonna dodge that all. I take that back. That was quick draw shot into Anakin, so it was unobstructed. All right, so he's going to go for the shot on quick draw, the shot that I thought it just was. Oh, never mind. He's switching targets to Tavson. Tavson's going to take two damage there. And it looks like he's going to take a couple actions. That is the, the big trap shooting tabs in there, is you never know uh, if you're just going to give him that double modified shot into you right then after. We got a range three from Kylo into Anakin. Spending the lock there. That looks like three paint. What do we have down there at the bottom? That is, oh, okay, yeah, that is going to be two two hits right there. Going to kill Anakin. All right, well, sorry about that, but we have a uh, conceding. Looks like Joss is just going to call it there. If you lose Anakin that early in the game, uh, such a big part of your list. Um, it's too much of an uphill battle, and again, this is a casual game night, so we're, we're just trying to have fun here. Um, but all right, we're going to get another one set up and streaming it live. So I'm going to go ahead and mute the mic while we set up the, uh, the next round. Right here, I uh, downloaded this really cool update. So let's see if... If this kind of works as we're going live with the Be Right Back logo in the middle. All right. Well, as soon as we get another game up, we'll get all the uh, data input, and then we will uh, get it started.
All right, we got the uh, list information updated there, and they are currently getting ready to set up, uh, busting out some new lists. Uh, this should prove to be a pretty interesting list. We got a couple interesting things, not super meta. Uh, we do have a defender with Rex or Brad and Juke, Major Rhymer with Intimidation, Advanced Proton Torpedoes, and Afterburners, uh, and Colonel Jend in there in the shuttle with Palp. On the other side, we have two matching Rogue Squadron Escorts, uh, both with Fire Control, Proton, and R3 Astromech, uh, which is a lot of fun there, getting both of those target locks early on and then keeping them. Uh, and then Saw Gerrera in a U-Wing with Tac Officer and the Pivot Wing on the U-Wing there. All right, well, once they kind of get set, we will set the uh, timer and get uh, some good commentary going on. All right, as we're into turn zero here, they're setting up those rocks. Uh, one thing to remember about turn zero, you gotta identify <laughs> your lanes, where you want to fly your ships. You gotta think ahead, and especially with the shuttle there, you want um, some big open lanes so you can fit that guy through there. No, I am. I just need to get back into rhythm of it. I feel like I've picked some things that don't quite work the way they did in the first version, or I played them wrong in the first version because this pattern analyzer is doing nothing for me. So, in Mark 1, this thing. Alright. U Wings there are coming in. Uh, or, I'm sorry, E Wings. <laughs> that right there is Deloren waving to everybody, maybe. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, yeah, we can see you, Deloren. <laughs> he was there eating on his uh, Chick fil A cookie. Those of you who know DeLorean know that uh, he's just about always got uh, some Chick-fil-A with him. Right, and I either played it wrong in the first edition or they reworded it. Well, it doesn't help with that. All right, Johnny G setting up uh, Colonel Jenden back there in the corner. You can't really see him because he's using that epic stand. Uh, and then placing, looks like, uh, Rhymer right there in the middle. We're going to see if he's going to try and uh, joust it up or if he's going to come around the side. Let's see. I don't really know Scott's play style. Johnny G is a uh, fairly aggressive player. That is an E-wing on the board. 
They can hear you. Can they hear me? Yeah, they can hear you. Yeah, that's knee wing guys. Oh, shit, there's two of them. Say hello. Yo. DeLorean, give us your uh, assessment here of how you think this match is going to go. Okay, so <clears throat> is that? That's not Hatchet. Oh, that's not Hatchet Man. Wait. No, it's not Hatchet Man. Right. He's playing uh, He's playing Jenden, Reimer, and Rexler. Where's Hatchet Man? That's my first question. <laughs> Where's the Hatchet? He's not playing with the Hatchet today. Okay, well, all right. So, what what are these E-wings? Who who are those? Those are two Rogue Squadron escorts with Saw Gerrera in the U-wing there. So we we just generic it up. Is that yeah, what we're he's doing? got a couple of Rogues. They're the PS4. They have fire control, R3 Astromed, giving them two target locks and proton torpedoes. So they're both built identical. And then you have Saw there with Tac Officer and Pivot Wing. So he's gonna help coordinate a little bit. That's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. E-wings are really good. Oh. They are a little overcosted, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, so how do you think this is going to go? What do you think Johnny G's is going to do? What do you think Scott's going to do here? Well, I know Johnny G kind of plays aggressively. Hopefully he doesn't mistakenly put them in. It, he has to be careful with his ships because if the E-wings can get in and be able to get that coordinate, that focus target lock coordinate on, let's say, the, is that a bomb? It's a bomber. That is a bomb. The so bomber actually, or the this is where the E-Wings, their built-in pilot ability, giving them long-range scanners, they're going to get that double modified shot. He does have to be very careful on that range control. I haven't looked at an E-Wing in forever. They have yeah. built-in long-range They have built-in, essentially, long-range scanners. He needs to make sure he doesn't feed his lower agility ships. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So he does end up, shot if he's not careful. Johnny G has the first player token here, so he's moving his three and four before those E-Wings. Um, and they have full repositions. So I'd say it's going to be an uphill battle for Johnny G. Um, those E-Wings basically have the same stat line as a defender, but he has them loaded out with the uh, Proton Torpedoes. They're going to get those target locks early on. Um, I'd say that bomber is not long for the world uh, at, bare, at bare minimum. So I have kind of about a 60-40 right now on Scott, um, just in the list building stage, and turn zero with all that open space right there in the middle. Um, Rexler with Juke, though, can easily take down an E-Wing, getting its double mods. Can I curse? Yeah. Johnny G's fucked. <laughs> that's, the, that's the slow, because it's like, that's a lot of offensive power. They're gonna be able to get double modified, double modified, modified shots. That's just that's just a lot. <laughs> like, like that's the one thing about the jank builds. It's all fun and games until they pull off their trick, and then they pull off their trick, and you're like, shit. So like, that's what's gonna happen. So saw, I think, is the most interesting choice that we have here. Is um, what do you do? What uh, saw? Let's pull up saw. Beep, 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 beep. Because our cool overlay system will allow us to do that. Dope. We can look up. Saw. Saw Guerrero. Boom. Saw Guerrero. While a damaged friendly ship at range 0 to 3 performs an attack, it may re roll one attack die. He basically gives fire control systems. But I still think it was an odd choice. I'm pretty sure he went with the saw because it's a PS4, um, so that he would have that uniformity across all there. But I really think someone like Hef getting him right in the middle and just messing up their day, or Cassian, or Braylon, somebody else I think could have been a much better spot in that list, especially for 54 points. I love me some, I love me some uh, Cassian. Pretty boy Cassian is what they call him. <laughs> PBC? Yeah. Peanut butter and crackers? Yeah, wait. <laughs> it's okay, I can say that, I'm white. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and it's going to be an interesting game. Yeah, so I guess we'll really see... Who's uh, in the chat, though? Uh, we have about five people watching right now. Five people, what's up? I want them to talk back to me, though. I kind of feel lonely, you know? I mean, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I know I'm surrounded by a lot of people right now, but I kind of feel lonely in the chat, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely. 
Just doing some rebel stuff. What's up, Trevor? Hey, my man, boy, you got some weight looking good. Yeah. Let me get, let me get off the mic so they don't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so, streaming? Well, I'm not streaming, but he's streaming. All right, and I'm back. Lauren got distracted. Ooh, a squirrel. All right, so again, we got a pretty pretty simple first round here. Um. All right, playing it casual here, kind of feeling each other out. All right, we just got a new follower. Thank you, Genghis John. <laughs> Genghis John rooting for Johnny G here. So let's see uh, if all that positive energy there will uh, push him just over the top. Looks like that shuttle's actually at a strange angle there. It may hit that gas cloud that's right in front of it. All right, we are still setting dials here. Gonna just keep us uh, keep us guessing here. Oh, looks like he does just clear that rock or that uh, gas cloud. Of course, at this point in the game, if he just wanted to fly right over it, it really wouldn't matter that much. The defender playing very uh, non-defendery here with just moving those slow little little jumps forward. Ah. You think they were on the screen? <laughs> all right. Okay, Rhymer pulling out all the stops here, blowing a charge on afterburners and everything. He just wants in there. So it's strange to see a Rhymer built like this. It's built uh, very light. Normally you would want to see some other type of munitions there so that if he didn't get that range, um, well, I guess he can up those to range too. So he does have a little bit more distance um, than a standard ship there. But you're also going to be facing off against two proton torpedoes probably coming in right here. Double modified, ooh, 
this is going to be a dangerous round for Johnny G. I think he very much overplayed and fed uh, Reimer right to um, Scott here. I'm Scott right here. I go ahead and I go ahead and boost. Yep. Get right behind there. I'm sure that'll fit. Oh, okay. I guess they're saying it did not. Didn't fit. Oh, to double boost. Gotcha. comes Rexler here. We're going to have some shooty shoots for sure. All right, we got a target lock being spent, re-rolling a couple. And that looks like three paint. He's debating probably spending the focus right now. He's going to spend it for, looks like, three hits. Spent the target lock as well. Ooh, that only looked, uh, could be three bits of paint there. I don't quite see it. Doesn't look like any damage was done. Let's see, none of his shields flipped down there at the bottom, so I don't think he hit. So, Genghis John, that's a good question. Uh, we were just talking about Saw a little bit ago, uh, why he was in this list. The, uh, Best answer that we could come up with was he probably picked it to be at a four um, so that he would be at the same PS so that he could move around. Okay, that looks like a lot of paint coming through here. That E-Wing is taking one, two, three, all three shields. Wow, okay, that advanced proton torpedo and a crit. What was the crit? Damaged engine. And a damaged engine going through. Wow. You talk about a uh, hard hitting crit there. Um, so it turns out feeding <laughs> your opponent that, uh, that ship is uh, not actually coming out that bad for him. All right, Scott's rolling some dice here. Let's see what we got. He's going to spend the lock, re-roll one of those. Wait, maybe he's not going to spend the lock. I'm trying to figure out what he's doing right here. This must be a proton torpedo. Maybe re-rolling one of them for being cocked. So it looks like we got Reimer's shield hit and hit and two crits go through there. Damage sensor. Disabled power regulator. We do pilot. Okay. All right, we got a couple of crits going through there. Uh, overall, that is not a bad trade. Not at all. All right, here. We're going to address that saw question here in a minute. Um, going to wait till the end of this combat round. 
without the dice tray today, I'm uh, really struggling to see what we're rolling. Looks like three bits of paint there. Does not look like he has that arc. And no range. All right, so we are going back to dials here. Um, yeah, that saw question, the best we can come up with was that he wanted all initiative fours. Um, I will talk to him personally in a little while and see why he chose saw, uh, because I do think there are a lot better uh, U-wings out there. Because uh, I know he's bringing it for the coordinate, which is helpful. But uh, you're right. It's on a ship that already has built-in long-range scanners, the FCS benefit that you get, or pseudo-FCS benefit that you get from SAW, doesn't really seem worth it. So let's see how those crits are going to affect what we see here. So Reimer's going to have to reload in order to in order to shoot a hard-hitting shot again. I would not be surprised to see him. Yeah, that's a very good option. Um, Reimer, with intimidation, can just get in there for the bump. Um, he has to be careful not to bump himself so that he can reload and get that action. Uh, Johnny G is first player. So if he moves into a position to bump, he can reload and then reduce the agility of whatever ship bumps into him, which I think is the goal here, that bottom E-wing being hurt uh, with damage engine. I don't, again, I don't know how Scott plays, but I would, I would imagine he's going to be turning in here with a, a bank. Again, this is a good time to take a break and uh, mention that we do have a subscriber goal down at the bottom as well as a uh, donation goal. The uh, subscriber goal, we're trying to get to 10 subscribers. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. Um, all you need to do is link it to your Twitch account and for gives us some free money once a month. Um, also, the donations down there or the uh, are towards us making a custom alt art card. Uh, once we get to about fifty dollars, that'll cover the cost of the um, animation of the card, as well as having it printed and getting it shipped out to uh, followers. I'm sorry, subscribers first, then then followers. Uh, and if we do reach our subscriber goal, we'll be giving away some uh, large package ships. So heroes of the resistance—I mean, not heroes of the resistance, uh, servants of strife, and uh, guardians of the resistance, republic. Guardians of the Republic, that's the one. All right. Okay. Um, defend Defender not doing Defender things there. Oh, never mind. That was the coordinated a boost. So he must be doing a 4K, and he wanted to get a little bit farther forward. Um, he was worried about not clearing, I'm sure. Reimer doing the K turn. Now the real question here is why he didn't coordinate the reload right there. Um, I guess he still wanted to shoot even if it is just going to be a two or three dice primary coming out of him. Right, looks like Saw's just doing that gentle one forward there. So if Johnny G did dial in that 4K, he's going to have a beautiful shot right on the Saw. We'll find that out here in a second. Okay, looks like a uh, strong three sloop from that E-Wing. Okay, kind of coming way back out. 
The question is, which way is he going to go next turn to clear that stress? Is he going to go back for engaging the damaged ship, or is he just going to go after the shuttle as a soft target there? Okay, looks like we have a self bump here. Yep. Does not look intentional. Ah, very good point there. Yes, damage sensor array. Forgot about that crit. Even has the nice crit tokens out there. Those are uh, burger tokens that he's using. All right, now we got this uh, idea of, okay, where do we mark? Who do we move? What do we keep? I think if Saw comes out of there, he should be able to do that uh, 4K right through the middle of the other two ships back there. So again, shout out to uh, Common Ground Games here. Tonight we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have about 10 players out here for just a casual Tuesday night. Um, again, thank you to Jameson and Common Ground for, uh, for hosting. For hosting X-Wing casually on Tuesday nights. Um, we may end up making this a regular thing if we can um, get consistent just to sit people out here and get them on stream and uh, help build up the community. We would love to do that out here. Uh, again, it's a great place to play. You know, support your local game stores, support places like this. Uh, it's a bear for them to stay in business and make money. So every every dollar you spend at a local game store helps, for sure. All right, so we are at Shooty Shoots now. He's debating where he's going to do his target lock, I guess. He double went uh, one way, nope, the other way. Yeah, he's going to go after that wounded E-Wing there. That's going to be range one. He's going to spend that target lock. He's got two health left on that. He's, spending the, he's thinking about spending that target lock. I don't know why you don't. Ah, but he doesn't have a focus, that's why. Ooh, that's going to work. That's going to come out with uh, hit, 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 crit. That one looks cocked right there, so he's going to let his opponent re-roll that one. Or he's just going to give him the benefit of the doubt here, because it's not going to matter. That looks like a dead ship. Uh, it's actually the E-Wing there that he's uh, shooting into. All right. Uh, looks like Jenden, or uh, sorry, not Jenden, Reimer there is going to be shooting into Saw, range one. Going to give himself three dice there. Looks like uh, one crit, two eyeballs. He's debating using his palp charge. He is not going to do it. All right, we are up to nine people watching live. Go ahead and say something in the chat if you're out there watching. It's always good to get a little feedback from those people who are uh, who are watching what we're doing here. Ah, we have a proton torpedo into into Rhymer there. Looks like he got two paint over there. Now he's re-rolling with his target lock. Ooh, it looks like that's going to be four. So that looks like three hits and a crit. That's going to be one dead Rhymer. He's debating if he spends the, uh, the charge there, if he'll be dead or not. <laughs> and that always unnecessary yep 
It's always unnecessary fuel leak after you're already dead. But it always is good to deal out those cards in the case that you may have made a mistake and did not get the correct cards out there. Alright, so trading an E-Wing for Rhymer. Not 100%. That's a uh, good trade in the long run. So we have uh, Johnny G with 73 points. So that's one, left, one more shot left in this round. Ah, Eternal Swordsman 7. Thank you for the comment. Yes, yeah, Scott didn't uh, didn't seem overly confident in this round, but I do think these two lists are pretty evenly matched. Um, now we're going to have to see the way these dice are going to go. And you're not the only one who uh, thinks of the old X-Wing PC game. Actually, when we first made the channel, we accidentally tagged it as the old PC game and not a board game. All right, so questioning what Saw's gonna do here. Does Saw maybe hard to the right, try and bump Jendon? Does he stop, maybe hoping to block in Rexler? But we know that 4K fits there. So if that's what Rexler does right now, which is not a terrible move, he just 4Ks right on the other side of Saw. About halfway. We just had. Yeah, that bomber's gone. Bomber traded for an E Wing. But the bomber did. He did straight up three shields and a crit in that advanced proton. Just boom. To the bomber? No, to his E Wing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it worked out. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> yeah, it worked out. It worked out, kind of. Since I play a bunch of machines, I'll use. So this is really the point in the game where we talk about win conditions. Um, if Scott is able to kill or even cripple uh, Rexler, we, I think mopping up that shuttle will be easy for an E-Wing and a U-Wing. But uh, then again, if that, if that E-Wing gets taken off the board here shortly, then uh, this game is pretty much going to be over. Strange to see the bank there instead of a, uh, a straight from the shuttle. Maybe he's hoping to block. Um, I think going just the one straight would have kept his arc open a little bit more, giving him more options. Because if Saw does a one forward as well, I think we're going to see um, him getting a range one shot at the shuttle. All right, looks like we got a one straight there. Not sure if a boost is going to get him out of the arc of the shuttle. There's a good chance it will. It's always just a question of whether or not that back corner is going to peek right out in there. Looks like he's going to be out of arc there. All right, and now with that positioning, if he did go forward with Saw here, he's just going to get a bump, not get shot at by the shuttle. Oh, we see a stop. Okay. That's a situation which uh, knowing what your other ships are going to do is important. Because a bump is not always a bad thing. Especially if your questions are, do I want to stop or do I want to bump? If you can not get that stress and do that straight maneuver, moving slightly forward and being essentially in the same position, it's almost always better to do the bump. Stress will stick with you, a bump won't. And as we can see now, uh, Rexler did just go ahead and do that 4K. Looks like he's gonna target lock, is what he did. He's gonna use that target lock right now. Johnny G really does like the target locks. Looks like he came out with four hits on that. Ooh, that looks like a couple blanks there. Let's see how many, one. Two. Thank you very much, Zen Castle. Okay, that's going to be two crits, it looks like. Two crits are coming in. We can get what those are. Closer to the camera, D. 
Damage engine and structural damage. Those are not good on that uh, U wing. Oh god. Oh god. I still get the All right, never discount somebody with a ship and a dream, but uh, this game with that E-Wing not shooting, anytime you don't get a shot is not a good round. Looks like that's going to be just out. All right, and it looks like Saw's shot got uh, two damage through onto the shuttle there. The turn I was finally going to get out of my stress. <laughs> we always play Mystic without stress. So he still does have an undamaged E-Wing. Those are vicious ships. And it looks like he's got one charge left on his proton torpedoes on that E-Wing. Um, they do not have the reload action, however, so it's kind of a one, one shot thing now. Either way, he does still have the three dice primary. So now what I do think we see is we're going to see that one forward from Saw into the self bump. Um, that way he does not allow that shuttle to come in and get that other shot um, at him. I think the real question is do we just see another 4K from Rexler here? Or is he going to try and bank in, kind of chase the shuttle? I'm imagining we see either a 3 straight or a 4K. Depends on who he's going to go after. If he's going to chase the bleeding U-Wing, then he's going to just do another 4K because uh, he can always boost afterwards if he needs to change that angle a little bit. Um, or if he's going to kind of chase after that E-Wing e as his win condition here, then we'll probably see him just go 3 straight so that he can get his mods. The shuttle here, I think we're going to see a hard 2 to the right. Um, possibly not. We may just see a gentle bank if he doesn't want the stress this turn. Um, but this is the time for for Scott to do some damage to that shuttle. If he can get that shuttle off the board, he can bring the points a lot closer to the middle. Still going to be probably a little bit behind um, in the overall game. And that defender is a very hard ship to kill without those proton torpedoes. bank coming in here going heavy with the shuttle maybe he's thinking that uh, he may end up getting a shot out of that back arc but he uh, he fits they say it fits clean right alongside of the uh, the cat turd there <laughs> you got Scott walking over to verify sure enough you can see daylight We have a coordinate action coming in here. So because he's a huge fan of those target locks, oh, okay. I was assuming he was going to target either a target lock or focus right there. That way he can get that double modded shot. But he's just gonna shift it over a little bit, which really makes me question whether or not he did that 4K. All right, saw. Let's see what we got here with saw. Does 
does not look like that is going to fit there. No. Nope. He is going to slide forward just a little bit. All right, we got the bump. He still does have the arc on the shuttle there. And yeah, we got a three sloop here. Okay, that could be, I could really like that if uh, Johnny G did the 4K. You get that E-Wing right behind there. It does look like he's still gonna be in arc of the shuttle, but the shuttle is not the worst thing to be shot by. And sure enough, there it is, the 4K, defenders doing defender things. That's one thing is getting, uh, when you do play a lot of the defenders, you get locked into those. I uh, gotta do that 4K. I have it, gotta use it. What? A little bit. It's pretty good about the cone. All right. Ooh, that's going to be a target lock modified shot from that E-Wing in a second here. But that four dice coming from, is that range one? Oh, and that is the end of that shuttle. Go in here and <laughs> All right, can the E Wing do it here? No, no damage. Ah, oh, that was crucial right there. He really just needed to get some damage through there. All right, so I'm thinking we're gonna see another 4K from the from Rexler here. That E-wing's gotta clear the stress. It did spend its target lock, it looks like, on Rexler. <laughs> yes, one arm Billy. This is uh, Thursday Night X-Wing coming to you live from the future of Tuesday night at Common Ground. All right, Jimmy getting aggressive here. He's getting heavy. Oh, look at that. We got the train tracks coming out. Looks like they're about to start a magic tournament uh, tonight in the... All right, thank you, One-Armed Billy, for your Prime subscription. And thank you to other members of the chat for bullying people into subscribing. <laughs> we do actually have five subscribers, so the subscription button worked when he did it right there, but it did not work earlier when Jack subscribed. So whatever we did may have worked out, but it also didn't update the subscriber. Let me see if I can work on fixing some of that. We're going to have to remake that goal then. Got to show the proper number of subscribers. We're up to five subscribers. We are halfway to our goal. I know that doesn't show in the, uh, in the goal right there. All right, getting back to that action. We have, looks like a lot of dodged dice right there. Nope, we got one shield down on the E-Wing. Be some, be 
All right, we got another shot going in for two shields now in the E-Wing at the end of this round. <laughs> All right, now as we're back to dials here, we're seeing uh, we got a stressed out shuttle. We have no other modifications resting out there on the board. I see we're gonna I think we're gonna see the shuttle fly right past the E Wing here. And then we're gonna see Rexler probably do another four K, hoping that that E Wing is gonna go just far enough to uh, be range one once he turns around. Let's see if we see a sloop here from the E Wing. Um, I I don't know. I don't see that as being a really bad bad call. Um, he could go also just so one hard to the right, maybe hoping that that uh, make me hoping that that shuttle flies right by and he's able to get a shot without getting a rear shot back. Hey, oh, thank you for the donation. We got five bits. It looks like somebody's been watching some uh, watching some ads there, getting those bits. Watch those ads, get those bits. Apparently, that's a thing you can do on Twitch. I love hearing that sound, that magical bring kind of sound. All right, it just goes for the bump here with that shuttle. Does clear the stress, though. I guess the goal of the palp shuttle, though, is to provide palp, so anything else is just bonus. Does look like he probably blocked the 4K, if that's what Rexler is going to do. Uh, looks like the E-Wing is just going to kind of disengage, run away here. It does need to build that range so that it can shoot that, pro that last uh, proton torpedo. All right, looks like we have a big disengage this round. All right, he's debating his follow-up actions here, wondering if the uh, barrel roll works for where he wants to be next turn. At this point, it really is going to take him about two turns to to disengage or to re-engage here. Yeah, I agree with the chat there. Target lock was probably the right right decision in that spot for sure. Um, especially because now he's going to be up. Oh, I just heard him out of the corner of my ear. He just said, oh, I should have taken the target lock. Uh, now I would not be surprised if we see something like a 4K uh, from the defender here. The shuttle, I think we're going to see a hard two back into the middle of the board. And the real question is, is that E-Wing going to just do maybe a three hard to the right, get down and maybe try and take on the defender um, as it points the other way, as the other way? I think it's D-Squiggle. 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 Yep, there's a uh, a debate over there whether the uh, Star Viper is Delon or Dallin or whatnot, so we just decided to call it D-Squiggle. Yes, Delon does sound more Star Warsy. All right, here we go. Called that two bank in. Gonna get that nice wide arc, pretty much anywhere that E wing wants to go. I think the next level strats here would have been uh, maybe that E wing doing a hard, 
two to the left and then a boost trying to just come around behind attack that shuttle from the side looks like we have a uh, 5k nope just five straight he's not turning around interesting strategy usually you uh, run away when you are in the lead but uh, not today and we see the 4k coming down here setting up for that uh, re-engagement I guess in this case, the running away is not the worst decision. You uh, allow your opponent the opportunities to make that mistake, to give you that opening, that chink in the armor, so to speak. Dang it. So we just hit the camera. Be right back. All right, there we go. Got to be uh, careful. Chairs get bumped. Cameras get bumped. No, we did not time this game. Um, I just set up the uh, new Streamlabs overlay today and did not put a uh, timer in there. Uh, we still need to get the, uh, the grayed out section for the sides with the uh, transparency. That way we can um, see all the upgrades and things better. But uh, like I said, it's a work in progress. Um, if you guys want to help, the best help we can get is to follow us and subscribe. Um, helping us get a little bit of money in the pot will help us contract out some of this to people who know what they're doing. So otherwise, we're just kind of playing it by ear, learning as we go. Also, if you have special skills and would like to uh, volunteer your time and uh, services, we would be more than happy to have the help. I think most of the people in the chat here are people that uh, actually do help with what we're doing, have helped promote us, help do everything, um, and we greatly appreciate that. Skills with a Z. Very dangerous skills to have indeed. All right, we got an E-Wing trying to use that gas cloud as cover. Ooh, doesn't look like he's going to get it. Absolutely, Genghis. You can bring your uh, the lowercase J dub, if you will, your new baby. We could even give him a mic, and he can uh, he can commentate. I'm sure he'll have quite a bit to say. All right, we got Rexler coming around the outside. We got the E-Wing. Looks like uh, we're going to have a shot here. Mm, kind of holding that uh, Ranger a little crooked there. I guess he's calling uh, no shot, but... Uh, hey, John, did you check that arc again from the E-Wing? I think it had a shot. <laughs> I think you have a shot. Yeah. All right, we got another uh, we got another arc check here. I'm using the uh, completely impartial judge of his opponent checking his arc for him. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, we got a little bit of bumpage there, and he says yes, he does have the arc. We got that Proton Torp coming in. Looks like we got two paint there, spending that lock. Uh, he's going to change one of those to a crits. That could very well be four. He's going to spend Palp on defense. So we're going to take one, two shields. And 
looks like a di direct hit. So that's going to do some damage there to the shuttle. Bring it down below half points. All right, so the game's getting a little bit closer. Natties. Pray to the god of Paul Heaver, you just saved yourself with some natties. All right, these are the points in the game where a timer is pretty important. Uh, we have been playing this game for about... Uh, that's been a while. Let me see, I'm trying to find a comment <laughs> about the time we started. I would say we've probably been playing this game for about 50 minutes now. So it looks like, uh, yeah, we started this game about 7.30, 7.25. So we've been playing for about 50, 50 minutes to an hour here. Casual games, uh, using a timer, really hit or miss. Um, and I hate to bring people into those constrictions if we are doing it for the stream, especially on uh, another store's casual nights. All right, so we have some uh, some options here. I think uh, Rex, we're probably going to see a three hard to the right to get in there, um, get him his free evade to activate that juke. The E-Wing, it's questionable what he's going to do. I think he really needs to try and get Palp off the board. Um, it's going to be your easiest target. It's going to bring you up on some points, bring you much closer um, to where you need to be. And then you only have to deal with one ship. He is out of Proton Torpedoes, though, so it's going to be very hard work to kill a defender who's basically getting those free evades every time. Uh, as an E-Wing, you're able to disengage, get those target locks, but you do have to get them from far away. All right, we got a four straight, which means he's just thinking about setting up, doing a strafing run. Um, he's going to boost around that rock, come back around to the outside. One thing to always remember is that uh, the shuttles now have that rear arc, so getting behind them is not always a great, uh, great thing. Alrighty here. Yeah, I can see. Follow us on Twitch. <laughs>
gotta love having the stream set up out in uh, in a place where people are. It really does draw a lot of attention. People want to come up, see what you're doing. Um, I just had a guy come up, and he's like, "Oh man, I have I have Amazon Prime. Why don't I subscribe?" Oh no. Okay, back to the action here. He is on the rock. He got greedy. He came in uh, came in quick and ended up costing him. Doesn't look like it's going to cost him that much because I don't think that Ewing has a shot. And it does not look like he rolled the hit there. Did you take rock damage? He took a crit. Oh, you're right. That is good eyes. He did take a crit right there. All right, sometimes you get ahead and uh, you play a little bit looser than you should and uh, it could cost you. He's going to be hitting that rock again, um, possibly taking another damage. Definitely not getting another action here. Um, now, the only question is, can the E-Wing take advantage of that? Ah, yes, coordinating a barrel roll. We will see if... Just had a judge call. He asked if he could coordinate a barrel roll while on the rock. So you can coordinate an action on a rock because the hitting the rock uh, takes away your perform action step. And since the action in question is not done during that step, there's nothing to take away. The only caveat to that, uh, to doing a booster barrel roll if you are on a rock, is that your template cannot overlap it. So he could not boost and probably could not coordinate, or probably could not barrel roll to the left, although he wouldn't want to. Um, but it does look like we're going to see probably a coordinated barrel roll to the right and then more than likely a 4K because it's a defender. Why wouldn't you? About 12 minutes. They just asked how much time they had, so I just threw out a random number of 12 minutes because that will bring us to the two-hour mark on our live stream tonight. Coordinated bear roll. Going all the way back is an interesting call here. Um, I think going all the way forward gives you the widest arc, but then again, he might end up on that rock on the other end of that 4K if that's what he decided to do. Oh, we got all sorts of stuff getting bumped around and moved around. The cat turds getting played with in the corner. All right, we have a bump there. That's not going to be good if that 4K does not put him on the rock there. If it puts him on the rock, it really doesn't matter. Barrel roll off one and then right onto another. Oh! That looks like he is going to be on that rock again. We're just playing ping pong over here, bouncing from rock to rock. Johnny G just likes playing with that uh, turd hat right there. I mean, <laughs> cat turd in the corner.
10 minutes. 10 minutes remain. So let's see this. Right now, in order to win, Scott would have to kill the shuttle or get half points on on Rexler. I think. No, let me see. That would be 44 points. No, if he got 44 points from just halving Rexler, that would put him at 126. One point shy. So he has to kill the shuttle if he wants to win. That's a pretty good start there on coming in on that shuttle. <laughs> got the three straight, just getting off a rock and not getting back on another one. Getting that free evade, and he's going to boost. He's going to give chase. We'll see here, though. That could be range one. Uh, the E-Wing shot is definitely range one. Looks like it's range two. One hit, no target lock. Looks like he's going to take it, though. That is going to bring him down to half points. This is going to be a very, very uphill battle now. Um, unless he could kill Rexler, I don't think there's a way he's going to win. Looks like we had a fuel leak on the shuttle there. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, Jax, there. That's going to be the game. Um, he took in a pretty good... <coughs> he took a pretty good uh, shot at it there. But uh, in the end here, it looks like it's just not going to go his way. Yeah, we are about at the uh, six and a half minute mark here. Um, it's doable. He can kill the shuttle in one shot, um, but Rexler's gonna take multiple shots for sure. Yeah, that was an interesting play decision when he uh, decided to do that, but it actually came out really well for him because the Dice Gods were on his side for sure. He got in there and did uh, three shields and a crit to an E-Wing with that Proton uh, for sure. And he only took three damage. So he ended up living another round doing more damage. So, I mean, you can argue with uh, strategies all you want, but results are results. And uh, it paid off for him. Huh. Okay, we got a ah, one bank, not a one straight. going to have that rear arc pointed at the E-Wing there. The E-Wing, he could, he could fly fast here, maybe a three bank and barrel roll and be out of arc. Uh, looks like we're just going to see a soft one bank here. Going to play it safe. Now the question is, does he boost into range one? Does he focus? Does he target lock? What's, what are we going to see here? I know it's all academic at this point, but it's always good to see games played out to the end. Aha, uh -huh. we have a little bit of greed here, but it doesn't look, he might have actually overshot his target. Ah, there we go. Looks like he probably did overshoot his target, so he had to barrel roll. It's going to cost him an action there, valuable, valuable action at this point in the game. Uh, looks like there's going to be enough paint there, so... Uh, does not look like Natty's. 
And that is the end of that game. All right, it's always good to see a couple of happy players walking away from a table and a uh, engaging game of X-Wing for sure. <laughs> yep, so got the handshake, got the win. Uh, they're walking away. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to mute the mic for a little bit and we're going to walk around and see if we can get another game up there on stream. Uh, worst case, I may just move the tripod over to a different table. We are uh, very blessed today to have three other games of X-Wing going on right now, um, which is amazing. So for a uh, local local store here, uh, Common Ground Games again is where we are broadcasting from today. And I will be back with you shortly. All right, so I was able to just kind of hop over to another table here. Um, we're catching this game. I may need to adjust the camera a little bit. Um, actually, you know what I will do? Let's just take off this right now. And the sub goal. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more. Uh -oh. All right, there we go. We are back here. We're going to get uh, some overlay updates. So we got Sweet D. Okay, we're going to do some list building here while y'all watch this game.
looks like we have Old T with Predator. We have the Star Viper DeLon. Or D. Allen, depending on how you want to say it. We have Outmaneuver and Advanced Sensors. All right, we got that overlay updated here. Gonna do a quick damage check, make sure nobody's damaged. I don't have to update that anymore, and then we will start some commentary. Also need to angle the camera down a little bit because you cannot see that other ship. Alright, going back to the update of this game, looks like uh, there was a shot fired before and the Mining Guild Sentry number 5 took one damage. Alright, we got a tie coming in hard and heavy on the outside Jedi there. Not 100% sure which one that is. We'll find out in the order that they move. That's a pretty heavy commit right there from Deloren onto onto that outside Jedi. You gotta wonder if it was just the bait to draw him in, or if if he thought that that Jedi could do everything he needed to do. Alright, that is Anakin down there in the bottom of your screen. Um, oh, it looks like there is another Jedi off the top of the screen here. But that's what you get when you move around your camera to pick up games. Maybe someday we'll have a professional production crew that can just come out with us and we'll get all the games on stream and camera and record them and then compile them. But that's kind of pie in the sky dream. All right, the last one of those ties going a little bit slower in there. Uh, keeping that arc nice and wide. Wanted to make sure that uh, going to get at least one shot in there. All right, we got a Jedi off the top of the screen there that's probably thinking on what it wants to do. Looks like it's going to be uh, sassy up there. We got an 
advanced sensors here from DeLon. That is Anakin down there at the bottom of the screen. Um, that is definitely the Jedi that you want to commit to killing early on if you can. Uh, it really does look like he gave him the option to kind of corner him in, box him in here. We'll see if Anakin kind of saw this coming and is going to do something like a um, like a five straight. Oh, but then again, I don't know if that five straight would be able to get him out of that situation. We will just have to wait and see. We got some explanations there of why he did what he did. And, uh, I mean, I think he positioned his ships in a, in a good way there um, in order to try and box him in. Now the question is from Sweet Tea, what are we going to see? It looks like there's a tiny bit of that gas cloud kind of poking out underneath Sweet Tea's uh, ship base. So it doesn't look like he'll be getting an action this turn. Hey, here we go. We got Johnny G walking up to the booth over here. And why don't we have him uh, sit down right here and we'll talk about that last game that he played. Yeah, what's there not to love about that game? All right, so uh, kind of walk us through your thought pattern from your turn zero to kind of where that game ended up, what you were thinking, what you were afraid of, what you were trying to do. All right, so on turn zero, I didn't take a look and notice that he had <laughs> proton torpedoes on the E-wings. So I was just going to joust him. Yeah, yeah, that is understandable. And then, yikes. So um, I figured if I acted like I was going to fly in slow up straight, that I could go real fast at the end and kind of boost in at the end, kind of at an angle at the end and avoid the torpedoes, which actually worked, except that my bomber did take a torpedo. But... Your bomber did take a torpedo, but in that same round, you did three shields and a crit onto one of the E-wings. Yeah, so I figure if somebody's going to take a torpedo, the bomber's the one to, to absorb the torpedoes. He's going to dish it out and uh, do his job. So, I mean, he actually did a primary attack after that for an extra damage, I think. That worked out. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's exactly what happened there. I was but, trying to get the... And he absorbed a second torpedo just to... Uh, finally died but he got two off two torpedoes gone so it was cool but yeah uh, so i was feeling good about it until then yeah rocks <laughs> yeah flying uh, from one rock barrel rolling off the rock using those awesome tricks and then right onto another rock um never feels good it always kind of makes you question what you were doing if you got too greedy or not um but then again i mean it worked out for you it was right. kind of at that point once you got half points on that other e-wing that it was that it was really over. Yeah, so I'll say what it, my plan was was to barrel roll back into a three bank because I knew if I did a three turn I'd be safe from the rock, but I I would get shot at. So I was trying to be extra fancy and I thought, all right, if I three bank in, I'll be out of arc and I'll be able to boost in and get a shot on him, um, which would have worked if I didn't hit the rock. So um, that is true. It would have worked if it had worked, right? Right. <laughs> so anyway, it worked out in the end. All right, cool. so here we are on this game here. Uh, we stepped away for a little bit kind of for our conversation, but as we can see, Anakin just kind of shot right through the gap that was left there. I think Sweet Tea, if it had had his action, could have barrel rolled over and gotten an even nicer little kill box there, maybe threatened Anakin to where he wouldn't have wanted to, uh, to try and boost up that middle. But Anakin there just dodged three out of the four arcs. He is facing down Sweet Tea. Um, looks like he's going to target lock there. But uh, for being in such a bad position, he really got out of that very well, exactly the way a Jedi is supposed to. All right, looks we had four dice here, spent the target lock, and looks like four hits onto Sweet T. D, what'd you just take? Two. All right, looks like he took two damage onto Sweet Tea there. John G, feel free to stick around and give your thoughts on this game. Oh, go do what you gotta do. Never mind. <laughs> All right, we got half points on Sweet Tea there. 
which is good, but it doesn't really give you that many points there, as you can see. One more on Sweet Tea. All right, Sweet Tea took one more there. All right, that looks like a dead Sweet Tea right there. Wow, okay. Taking that range one with the two and then one from each of the other two range three shots. That, uh, that's that gotta hurt. Mm. That's gotta hurt losing the, such your, your prize ship right there in the beginning. Um, it's only 58 points, so each one of, well, Sassy is only 44, but the other two Jedis are much more expensive. The fact that he didn't do anything in return with it is what's really going to come back to haunt him. Yeah, it really hurts that he couldn't push something onto Anakin there. Mm -hmm. So now, with the way things are set up, I think from the uh, Jedi at the top right there, we're going to see something like a like a one bank in, maybe something a little bit faster, and probably a one bank from the one there in the middle of the board towards the mining guild ties. Uh, it's questionable whether or not they're gonna K turn right there or hard to or so to the left to chase after Anakin. However, I'm not sure chasing after Anakin is a good idea. Yeah, hitting that gas cloud definitely cost him. Uh, not being able to take that focus right there um, was huge. And in a list against uh, Jedi, Sweet T's ability is almost useless. <laughs> yeah, that is harsh. You know, it almost looks like it would have been better if he had Dalen come in and just bump his guild tie. Because it might have it might have gotten. Uh, Anakin into more trouble. That is true. If Delon did not advance sensors, I'm not actually even sure he would have bumped. Um, I think he'd be actually right next to that red-based mining guild tie facing the edge of the board, which then uh, would have prevented Anakin's boost forward and would have um, got a couple more more shots onto Anakin. But uh, then again, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a really good Christmas. All right, we got one tie flying up to the other end of the board here, the other one following. Um, I guess he decided he did not want to chase. And he decided that with a, with a fierceness here. Little helping hands coming up. Little ebony and ivory reaction right there. Teamwork, making that dream work as many other cliches as I can say right now. All right, we got that gentle one bank. Gonna clear that stress and he is going to switch it. He's gonna take that stress right back and turn the other way. That is DeLon being a knife fighting champion right there. Let's see, let's go ahead and bring up DeLon's card for those of you who do not know watching along with us. Not in the chemo, we want it in the Star Viper. So, Delon's ability. After you fully execute a maneuver, you may gain one stress token to rotate your ship 90 degrees. Which is super helpful when it comes to the amount of maneuverability that a Star Viper already has, and then being able to, to do that, it's just insane. Silence and side side lens silences. Thank you so much for following. Uh, that really helps. Let me go ahead and take this card down off of here. Streaming really needs two screens. I will say that. Why not K turnitize? That is a good question. Yeah, if it was me, I probably would have um, 
would have K turned the ties or possibly hard turned them to the left. Um, but then again, I mean, if we all played the same way, it wouldn't be a very interesting game. I think the real questionable call was the back one. Why do the one instead of a two, uh, two or a three? We got Anakin. Looks like he's doing a sloop there. It's questionable whether or not he's going to be in art of Delon. He may even have the bullseye here, so he might not. He might spend the force there to not even take stress. Not sure if it's quite in range. Looks like they're discussing that right now. Easiest way to solve that is to. Nope, looks like he spent it. Spent a force to uh, clear that stress. I guess from their eyes it was clear enough. A little bit of timing chart action going on right there. They're discussing um, how that all times out. He Anakin does the maneuver. He would gain the stress token, and then since he had that ship in his bullseye, he spent the spent a force charge to clear that stress, and then he was able to use his fine-tuned controls, considering they trigger at the same time, and then he even got an action then after his normal action. Not sure what those two dice were from. They're discussing different target options right now. How many green dice, how many red dice? Looks like he rolled uh, two hits there on the sassy. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> with that gas cloud in the middle there, there's very, very low chance of hitting that. Rolled too many dice, he's going to go ahead and re-roll there. Does not look like he's going to be taking any damage from that. Doesn't look like Sassy had that shot. All right, looks like a uh, Mining Guild Tie took one damage there. That is the injured one now has two, two damage cards on it. And Delon lost a shield. So even though he was very much out of position there, I don't see him taking that turn too hard. The real question is now what is he going to do? Let me uh, let's see, bring Johnny G back here. All right, there we go. We got to switch the mic stats here. All right. So, John G, what do you think about him uh, turning those ties towards the uh, the west of the board there? He's getting so close to the board edge, I don't know what he could have done to turn around other than turn left or right. 
as far as turning that direction. I think I would have turned the other way just to get some uh, defensive uh, class gas cloud action going. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point there. The uh, gas clouds are also uh, could have been used to his advantage right there. Um, also, just the Anakin issue. It's uh, I think this is going to be one of those things that when we look back at the game footage here and when uh, Deloren watches this, he's going to he's going to really question himself right there as well. But uh, now I think he really doesn't have any other option but to K-turn. I think now is the time. Uh, the question is really what he does with the lawn there. He doesn't have any damage on any other ships. Okay, it looks like we are not K-turning. We are just uh, using the uh, Mining Guild's ability there of ignoring those obstacles while you fly. Then he is going to barrel roll, maybe hoping for a block here. He's going to turn turn the other two in towards the Jedi there. And we'll get some shots. Uh, all right, that is a an option. I mean, if he wants to keep his actions, it's actually not a bad call. Yeah, modified shots are good shots. And I think that's a safe move. I think the back Jedi there was probably going to do the one hard to the left. Uh, the question is the front Jedi there, which I believe is Mace. This one was actually painted. The top part of this was painted by. The camera is not frozen. Deloren actually is just sitting there holding his finger on the uh, on the ship. I had to look over and go, "Wait, is that what's really happening?" Yes, it is. He's debating the barrel roll right now. I agree. He does not want to do it. Right there, he has the best option for a block, and uh, he did it. Uh, maybe he's sure worried he's about the lawn there. I mean, uh, it's kind of like you want a conga line of TIE fighters so they can't just jump through them all or blow past them. Come a little bit closer to the mic. All right. Yeah, it was an interesting move there. Um, hmm. We'll have to set this up to where we can do uh, interviews and commentary after the game. And he goes to the back. Okay, giving that Jedi plenty of room there. Maybe he's really just hoping to block the 5K? He does a three straight. And then does Delon's ability to take that stress and turn it 90 degrees. Very interesting decision here. Let's see how it works out. Yeah, let's find out what Sassy's going to do. Sassy's going to move first here. Ah, looks like the front one is sassy. Just going to be a bump on that front guy right there. See, this is that perfect example of if that front mining guild tie had just stayed where he was and focused, he could add a modified shot right there. But instead, he second-guessed himself in barrel rolls and cost him a mod. And this right here is sassy. I mean, no, this is this. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a uh, two sloop. I think it may be an aggressive call when he didn't necessarily need to, but, uh, you know, each player to his own. I guess it may have just been insurance against having both his ships bump each other. Yeah, I think right there, though, I mean, uh, it doesn't really hurt him. He has both of his ships are uh, undamaged. That's true. Ooh, All man, what do we have right here? So Delon looks like he's going to squeak out that bump there. Uh, Anakin tried to do the slowest maneuver he could, which was the one bank, because uh, they do not have a one straight. Yeah, I know. And now, Anakin that doesn't bump. have any really good shots. Uh, no, it looks like he probably has... It may be unobstructed to that front TIE fighter there, which, if I remember correctly, is the damaged one. Yeah, I think he's going to get some back corner gas cloud help there. That's a good point. Uh, I'm thinking that the closest point is actually going to be Oh, Anakin's he's going downtown. Left. <laughs> he's going for the long range one. Maybe the red base is the damaged one. That looks like three hits to me. He took two damage. 
That's on number four. That is not the damaged one. Well, if you're going to so take damage, spread it out. So we got a one health tie. We got two one health tie fighters left. All right, we're debating on some obstruction here. They're determining that it's not obstructed. It looks to be range two. So that is two dice. Oh, fire dice. Looks like two hits. And that's five. Gonna be dead right there. If those green dice betrayed him for sure. All right, looks like we have, uh, should be Delon up right now? Nope, it's uh, Mace shooting. Gee, so it's like three paint there. Those dice are hard to tell what exactly they are. It looks like three hits. Hit, hit, crit. And number four is now dead. Ouch. Threw a rock even. I don't think that one. Not oh was it was Mason in the front? This one yeah oh. is from that middle Jedi ship. So we got uh, Delon here. Nope, weird. Back to the mining guild tie. I'm sorry. Looks like one hit, and that Jedi is safe. As they usually are when mm -hmm. tie fighters come in. And that was uh, Sassy, mm -hmm. who does not have the title on it or the uh, configuration. So it does have full three agility there. All right, I think uh, we're in a dangerous spot in this game. Uh, D has lost quite a bit. Losing Sweet Tea two times. Ah, yes, you're correct. Mace is the one that did the sloop. Because Sassy moved first. Sassy is the one in the middle. One of these days, we're going to figure out how to put labels on the on the ships in the overlay. I'd also need a uh, USB splitter. <laughs> because <laughs> I am filling up all my USB ports right now. <laughs> Which is actually one of the reasons I didn't bring the dice cam tonight, because uh, I wanted to be able to commentate. I wonder if we took a vote, would we rather have dice cam footage or commentary? <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that, Jax. Amen to that. so good. So as much fun as it is to fly the Vipers, they can do all kinds of really fun maneuvers. I don't know if board position is worth not getting your tokens ever, because that tends to be what happens when you're constantly doing that 90 degree take of stress. You're just not getting any actions ever. Yeah, that is true. You've given up quite a lot for the lawns. Um, really agility or mm -hmm. ability to turn any way he will. Um, I mean, he does have advanced sensors, so... Yeah, that is a good point. He could be focusing... But then you get your stress every turn, so what am I saying? I mean, you, you still yeah. can't... You can do it on that initial one. You can focus mm -hmm. and then uh, do that. But yeah, once you do that, you're perpetually stressed for the rest of the game. So how did he get double stressed right there? No, he didn't. He didn't. He just forgot to take off the other token before he put it on. So 
So now we have the giant tokens that everybody is using. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but many people are. At some point, are they going to make giant dice? <laughs> Legal. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Because then you don't need a dice tray. You just be like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, drop I, these I agree. bunkers on the table, and you're all going to see it no matter what. Of course, you might knock everything off the table as they bounce across the board, but... I was trying. I was like, wait a Big tokens do make it easy to see from up here. Yeah, absolutely. We actually uh, just ordered a, another set of large tokens from Curl Ball Creatives. Uh, they will be here um, within the next week or so. Oh, nice. Uh, so we, from in the future, at least on Thursday nights, we'll all be using uh, giant Curl Ball tokens so that it's really easy to see um, and helps the uh, viewers at home keep up with uh, us when we're not uh, as good with updating the overlay as we should be. Um, but a lot of times on Thursday, uh, especially early, there's only two of us there. Um, we gotta do what we gotta do. You know, it's it's all about having fun, playing the wang. Yeah, and one of the hardest things too is when you have a ship that has a special ability that's really fun to do, to not abuse it. Use it too much to your disadvantage. I think we may be seeing that here, yeah. Absolutely, I think I think that's uh, something the chat's picking up on right now. Uh, we also discussed it during your game with the 4K. Right. Now, the 4K, it's one of those things, you have it with the Defender, it's white, you gotta do it, gotta do it every time, but it uh, sometimes bites you in the butt, especially when you uh, fly from one rock right onto another rock, right? <laughs> In my defense, I knew I was going to hit the rock the second time. I just didn't know what other board position I could actually get that would be better. So I figured I'd, I wouldn't shoot at him anyway if I wasn't facing him. So <laughs> wasn't worried about taking another damage, which I did take. Yeah, which you did. You rolled so. two crits on those rocks. So good. I'm a defender. Luckily, you had those shields, right? Oh, yeah. All right, we got some dice rolling and some damage dealing out. Ooh, that's a lot of damage that just got dealt that out That is there. a kill box for the Viper. So I just saw D flip some cards. Um, looked like he just took hit, hit, crit. He's taking a lot more. I'm not even going to worry about updating this right now. It literally doesn't matter if Oh, OK. That is a, uh, a lot of damage cards just being dealt out there. Um, it looks like the Star Viper is probably gone. Yeah. Yep. D refusing to roll his green dice and just kind of conceding that that ship is dead. Uh, we got three Jedis on to one Mining Guild tie here. The lonely Mining Guild tie. Three Jedis being completely undamaged. Most of the time I say never give up. Never give up. Never surrender. Uh, I think this is the time that you give up or surrender. Uh, the store closes in about, they're going to kick us out in about half hour, at least force us to pack up. I'm pretty sure they've conceded. Oh, no, no, we have dials down. They're going to keep playing. Uh, we're going to take this time, though, to talk about, um, to thank uh, Common Ground Games for allowing us to come out here and stream, hooking us up with their fast Wi-Fi. Um, no, they have not. <laughs> they have not used their R2 chargers. Um, so this is what you uh, you see kind of a jank list flown against a uh, more high meta list. Um, does it look like he's going to be right onto that rock? I mean, it's a mining guild tie, so it doesn't matter all that much. Looks like it's clean. Uh, but again, big thank you to, um, to Common Ground Games for allowing us to come out here. Uh, thank you to all the players who played on stream. Um, and, yeah, thank you for all of you guys watching. Please follow if you haven't already. And if you can, subscribe. Uh, every little bit helps. If you can, if you have Amazon Prime, you can get a free subscription. Uh, it helps us out. We're up to five. Once we get up to ten, we're going to give away a uh, large ship pack. Either a, uh, we'll ask the winner which one they want whether they want uh, one of the Guardians, the Servant of Strife, or uh, <laughs> uh, so yes, we're also working on creating an alt art card 
and we're not going to reveal what that card is going to be. However, it will be something that is very usable by any faction. Uh, Delord is now showing off his uh, his Star Viper there, painted by Idea Squad's very own Mike D. He does amazing work with uh, his kind of his fire and ice paint scheme is his signature thing there. Delorean's got uh, two st uh, two Star Vipers painted, one fire, one ice. Uh, Mike has two robots painted fire and ice, and they they look amazing. Um, one of these days, I'll figure out how to post up some pictures of those in the middle of the chat there, or maybe we'll just get them to fly them on stream next week. Um, yes, the giveaway will be for subscribers. Um, so in order to qualify, you must be a subscriber. The alt arts we're going to be making are going to be for all of our followers. Um, we may figure out some way to do that. Um, we do have to get raise enough money to pay for the postage and things to give everyone these cards. So uh, stamps are, I don't know how much stamps are. I'm not an elderly person. So uh, we'll figure out how many we have to mail out uh, for that. But if everyone gives just a little bit, many hands make light work. They are truly playing this out here. <laughs> Delorean is excited. He thinks he's going to do it. If he did, it would be the greatest comeback of all time. But I'm very sure that the store will close long before <laughs> we get anything to really, really change here. And I think that's going to be the end for Delorean right there. And there's the handshake. All right, everybody. Um, thank you so much for watching. That's going to be all for tonight. We're going to start packing it up to get out of here, respect these uh, employees' time as they're getting ready to, to close up here in about half hour. So, uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll put out more details on our uh, subscription goals and our donation goals. Uh, there should be a link to donate. Uh, it'll go directly to our PayPal or you can donate bits. You can earn bits by watching ads on Twitch. Uh, you can also um, subscribe to us via Prime or any of the other tiers. You'll get access to a really cool light bulb emoji. Um, also, it just really helps us out. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing and you want to see more of it, want to help us get better, please subscribe. All right, well, that's going to be all for this evening. Let me, I'm going to use one of our cool other, Um, figure out how to there we go stream ending <laughs> eventually I'm going to figure out how to transition those a little bit smoother but uh, alright thank you guys so much that's going to be all for us tonight I'll keep this up here for a few minutes if you guys want to keep up the chat